The first major combat use of modern stealth technology occurred in 1991 when the F-117 Nighthawk was tasked with attacking heavily fortified targets in Iraq as part of Operation Desert Storm. These jets were able to sneak past the Iraqi defenses and take out important military assets all the while going nearly undetected. Today, stealth has evolved and given us even more evasive aircraft such as the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber, the F-22 Raptor, and now the F-35. But how did these incredible aircraft come into existence and how exactly does the stealth technology work? Stealth technology can be traced all the way back to World War I when the Germans experimented with the use of translucent cellulose acetate a transparent covering material to attempt to reduce the visibility of military aircraft. However, this never ended up working out too well and instead made sunlight reflecting off the aircraft even more visible and the idea was ultimately scrapped. A few decades later, during World War II, the Germans took another crack at stealth technology and developed the Horden HO-229 flying wing, which became the world's first flying wing to be powered by jet engines. Ultimately, the German aircraft ran into numerous technical issues and never saw combat, but nonetheless, it was an incredible achievement for its time. As World War II came about, so with it came major advances in radar technology, and thus the demand for stealth technology as well. One notable radar system during this period was the British early warning radar system known as Chain Home. The system was built and developed by the Royal Air Force before and during the Second World War to detect and track aircraft attempting to cross the English Channel. Composed of 21 operational stations, the system allowed Britain to provide radar coverage for the entire Europe-facing side of the British Isles, as well as high-flying targets over France. This proved extremely important, especially during moments like the Battle of Britain, where the Royal Air Force was able to defeat the powerful Luftwaffe successfully. The network was even capable of providing early warning to V-2 rockets being launched within Germany. Radar, which stands for Radio Detection and Ranging, works much the same way as if you were to shout into a well or canyon. As your voice propagates towards the bottom, an echo occurs because some amount of sound reflects off the bottom of the well. By determining the length of time between when you first shouted and when you heard your echo, you can determine based on the speed of sound exactly how deep the well is. Radar works the same way, except that it uses radio waves instead of sound waves. Whether it is mounted on a plane, ship, or it is part of a ground-based system, radars operate generally in the same fashion. A radar system will generate a short, high-intensity burst of high-frequency radio waves towards an intended target. These radio waves will then bounce off an object, such as an airplane, and return some amount of reflected power to the radar system, where special signal processing equipment will determine exactly how far away the object is. This is performed by taking the difference in time between when the incident wave was sent and the reflected wave was received. Additionally, by determining the angle at which the reflected signal was received, an exact point as to where the object is in the sky can be determined. Stealth is able to combat systems like this by optimizing something known as the Radar Cross Section, or RCS. The RCS is a measure of how detectable an object is by radar. Objects with a large radar cross section will be easy to detect while objects with a low radar cross-section will be much, much harder. The RCS is given in units of meters squared. Large commercial airliners like a Boeing 737 or even a Boeing 747 have an RCS as high as 100 square meters. On the other hand, a stealth aircraft like a B-2 stealth bomber is rumored to have an RCS value as low as one square centimeter or roughly the size of a bumblebee. By lowering an aircraft's radar cross-section, you can lower the amount of power reflected to where it is so low that the received component of the radar system cannot easily detect it, which essentially makes the aircraft invisible. The RCS is mainly composed from three factors. Number one, the material from which the vehicle was made from. Number two, 
the size of the object, both in terms of the absolute size and the relative size compared to the radar's wavelength, and number three, the angle of incidence from the radar wave and the reflected wave. Starting with the first item, the specific material used to coat the aircraft that is intended to be stealthy is extremely important. Radar absorbent material, or RAM, is material that is specifically designed to absorb the incident radar signals hitting the aircraft. On many stealth aircraft, a specific type of RAM is used called iron ball paint. As radar waves hit the exterior of the plane, oscillations are induced within the coating that alternates the magnetic field of the paint. This causes the radar signals to be converted into heat, which is transferred to the rest of the aircraft and dissipated instead of being reflected back to the source. Secondly, as a general rule of thumb, the larger an object is, the greater the radar cross-section. Large commercial airliners with lots of surface area are able to bounce back a lot of the radar system's power, while much smaller and more nimble jets, such as the F-35, have much less surface area, which immediately lowers its radar cross-section. Lastly, the shape and orientation of the surfaces of an object are extremely important to develop low radar cross-section. As an example, if you notice the F-117 or the B-2 stealth bomber, you will notice that the surfaces are flat and angled in a very intentional manner. This angle causes the reflection from the incident radar wave to reflect away from the source, thus preventing the radar system from ever receiving the signal back for analysis. This, as opposed to a typical commercial airliner, which is rounded in shape and will allow at least some portion of the radar wave to bounce back directly to the source for further analysis. These three principles were exactly what was discovered by Lockheed aircraft engineers in the early 1970s when members of the Lockheed Skunk Works program found that aircraft designed with certain characteristics could have a very low radar signature. As a proof of concept, the Lockheed engineers built two prototype aircraft that validated the concept, which eventually turned into the F-117 Nighthawk. This became the first modern, purpose-designed stealth aircraft and although developed in the late 1970s, stayed a complete secret until the late 1980s and early 1990s. Since then, the United States has relied heavily on stealth aircraft, including the B-2 Spirit, the F-22 Raptor, and now the F-35 Lightning, all of which exhibit some form of stealth capability. Other countries are also jumping on the stealth bandwagon such as China and Russia. In the last decade, China developed the Chengju J-20 and is also currently working on the more advanced Shenyang FC-31. Russia also has introduced the Sukhoi Su-57, which is expected to be certified for operational use sometime later this year. Stealth technology is continuing to expand its role, and over the last decade, we have seen stealth expand beyond just aircraft and into missiles, helicopters, ships, and now even satellites. This is not to mention the stealth capabilities that are still unknown to the general public and that are in development today. It is rumored that some countries are even experimenting with plasma stealth technology by generating a plasma field around an aircraft as a way to further absorb radar waves. It will certainly be interesting to see where this technology evolves going forward. Leave your comments below on where you think stealth technology is going in the future. If you would like to stay updated with more videos like this one, be sure to click on the subscribe button below. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video.